everybody and welcome to the flute practice. Today I'm going to be looking at how to play chromatic scales and whole tone scales. These guys are kind of two sides of the same coin in a kind of a way. Before we start we need to understand the basic idea of what the semitones look like on the piano. Obviously we need this directly for playing a chromatic scale but we also need this for the whole tone scale. So I am showing you a keyboard here because this is really the easiest way to show this. The smallest units in Western classical music are semitones or half steps. Uh, in other forms of music, we have quarter tones and all kinds of weird things like that. We don't have any of that. And basically we've divided up the octave into 12 semitones. So we have 12 little half steps in the full octave. So. If you look at the piano here, it's very easy to see this. We have the white notes and most of the time they're separated by a little black note, which forms the little half step in between the whole step, which is white note to white note. But you can also see there's two exceptions where there is no little black note in between. That is between B and C and between E and F. So in these two spots, there is no little black note in between and E to F is a semitone already or a half step and B to C is also a half step. Everything else has that little black note which forms the sharp and the flat. So we have F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp. Or if you think backwards, you can have the flat. So you could have A, A flat, G, G flat and F. So yes, in other words, G flat and F sharp on the piano are the same note and on the flute we finger them the same. It's very complicated and I'm not going to get into it, but basically they're not the same note, but for now we're going to think of them as enharmonic equivalents. Big word, just means the same note. Unlike the scales where you can just really kind of know the basic outline of sharps and flats and then go for it, the chromatic scale you really have to know very carefully and clearly all the order of every single note in this. So there's nothing around this except practicing it and knowing that you know that you know that you know the scale. I'm going to do the F chromatic scale just because I like it and because it's a nice place to start. So we have F, then we have the F sharp, we have G, G sharp, A, A sharp or B flat depending how you like to think about it, then B. Here is a little exception moment. We go from B straight to C. Then we've got C sharp, D, we got D sharp to E. And once again, a little exception moment, we go from E directly to F. And we carry on in this way up into the high register. When we're playing the chromatic scale, it really helps to group the notes either in groups of four or in groups of three or six. So you can either think, That's in four or in six. I find grouping them really just helps me start and end on the right note once I'm getting used to playing these little scales. A nice little way that you can practice these chromatic scales is to not practice the whole thing in one go, but rather practice parts of it. I like to sometimes do like six notes of the chromatic scale and then always jump to the next step of the chromatic. So I'll start on F, do six notes, then jump to the next note of the chromatic, which is F sharp, then the G, this is part of a system that I have um, put on Patreon for you guys. For those of you that are part of the system, it's kind of part of the practice system that I use, warm up system I use. So if you want access to this, I would encourage you guys to go check it out there. Okay. Whole tone scales. Now the good news is there's only two of them, two different whole tone scales, not a lot to remember, but basically instead of thinking in half steps, we're thinking in whole steps. Now you can imagine this is going to get tricky if we're thinking of a whole step from B to C sharp, not to C natural. So if we start on C, but now we have a problem because we can't go to F. That's a half step. We have to think to the F sharp. And now we have to carry on thinking in whole tones. So we go from F sharp to G sharp. Whole step from G sharp is A sharp. Whole step from A sharp to B flat is to C again. Yes, that's right. B flat to C is the whole step. 
So I could probably leave my B flat key down and think like this. There's your whole turn scale. It sounds a bit weird. You kind of got to get used to it. The big point of departure from a whole turn scale is after that third to the fourth. So the fourth we're used to hearing a semitone. And we have to hear the whole tone. That's the big point of departure. The whole tone scale, I think, in groups of six. It's six notes, so I think. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. That's how I tend to think about it. Perhaps you could group it in other ways as well. Let's quickly run through the C sharp whole tone scale. So we start on C sharp, we go to D sharp. Nasty piece of work. Then from D sharp or E flat, we go to F. Then we got G. Up to the B, it's quite clear. And then B to C sharp. So I've got to remember that F, D sharp, C sharp. And there it is. That's your whole tone scales. As with most things, they seem obscure, but they do come up in pieces and they're useful to know, especially your chromatic scales. Those ones you just don't get around. But even the whole tones, they are useful to know. Remember, we've got a scale workshop coming up on Patreon. So if you'd like to really crack down on your scales, I'm going to encourage you to go check that out. Go sign up with Patreon. Become one of my amazing patrons. You guys, all of my existing patrons, you are amazing. I love you guys. Thank you for all of your support. And I'm really looking forward to this amazing workshop. Until then, everybody, happy practicing and see you next time.